is going on my homies and welcome back to Garage Talk. So I got a lot of feedback on the lipless crankbait video that I put up a little while back. We were featuring the Thunderhawk, which I actually have right here, this guy, as well as the Nishine, this guy right here. The key being with those baits, they're new. Nobody's talking about them. A lot of people are using them and they're silent. They don't have a rattle in them. And one of the things that you know about lipless crankbaits is most have rattles. So what I thought I would do is, you guys ask me a lot about what baits do you have in your box aside from those silent lipless crankbaits for this kind of early spring kind of period? Because the lipless is such a valuable tool this time of year. So what I thought we'd do is, I got my box right here with all my lipless crankbaits. We're gonna go through what I got when I use each specific style, what they kind of fit best in when it comes to kind of the, the cover, the layout, the contours, the type of places that you're fishing on your lake this time of year to catch bass that are pre-spawn as well as moving in super shallow and doing some of that staging behavior. So we're gonna go through these, go through the colors, go through the action styles and the sounds, like what kind of rattles they have because it makes a big difference. So hit that like and subscribe button. Let's talk lipless crankbaits. How you guys eat that trap? So eat. I have a ton of lipless crankbaits, and there's two reasons for that. I need a ton because I think there's different situations when different ones really play in and catch more fish and outfish others. The other thing is I really like fishing lipless crankbaits. It's one of those deals that's a power fishing presentation. You can fish them fast, you can cover a lot of water, and it's also reaction style bait. It's a great way to sort of trigger bass when they're potted up or in these little kind of wolf packs, moving in shallow to go and spawn. You can find them with a lipless and then play around with other baits to try to catch bigger fish whether that's a swim bait, dragging a worm, throwing a chatter bait, whatever you like to do, even a glide bait. But it's a great way to find fish efficiently and I can fish it around cover too, which is one of the crazy things. There aren't a lot of crankbaits that actually fish around grass or cover very well, but a liftless crankbait, because of the way you can kind of rip it out of the grass, rip it off the bottom, and as well as sort of like drive it and grind through the bottom. You can fish it in a lot of water columns in a lot of different situations. The versatility really allows you to sort of use it anywhere. You can go from a grass flat to a break to a little like rocky shoal and you can fish that bait on all those types of cover in all those situations equally. So let's get started. If you're gonna get one lipless crankbait, and I have a ton of them in my box, you can see they're all stacked up here. The Red Eye Shad has really been the standard. The Strike King Red Eye Shad, by the way, I'm gonna put links to all this stuff in the description box at Tackle Warehouse. So if you guys wanna go check out more colors, more vibration styles, whatever you wanna do, just go ahead and hit those links down below. But the Red Eye Shad, I have probably caught more fish on this guy than any other lipless crankbait that I own. It's such a versatile bait, puts off a ton of vibration. And what's really cool is, and Kevin Van Dam talks about it, it has a very unique fall. A lot of times when we're fishing these lipless crankbaits, yes, we reel them in and catch them, especially in early season, late winter, when those fish are super just not in the mood, but one of the best ways to fish a lipless is actually ripping it or yo-yoing it or worming a crankbait as we call it. And the lipless really does a good job doing that because it doesn't have a bill. So you can pop this thing off the bottom, have it kind of settle in the water column for a second and then sink down. And what Kevin Van Dam did with this guy is he made it fall very vertically so it shimmies down back to the bottom after you're done ripping it or yo-yoing it. And that presentation is really key with a lipless because you're getting kind of a reaction bite this time of year. You're hitting a piece of cover. Even if you're reeling in open water, I can't tell you how many fish, especially in Florida, I'm fishing in open water. There's no grass. Maybe the bottom's a little bit hard, but I'll be swimming that bait along and I'll just pop it. You know, pop it up. It shimmies up very quickly and then settles back down and that's when you get your bite. Sort of like when a crankbait with a bill deflects off of a rock or some kind of cover. That sort of change in trajectory, that quick movement, that, that dash to a different part of the water column really triggers them to bite. So I have a bunch of red eye shads. This is actually like a chartreuse with a black back, black back great for, for kind of dirty water. I got a bunch of red ones, you know, red, great color for springtime. And then I always try to cover my shad colors, you know, just like a sexy shad with a green back, super standard. And then you'll see how beat up this one is. 
especially if you fish in Florida, you gotta have gold. This is a sexy shad, a sexy gold shad. Um, you can tell it's been thrown a few times because the head's all broken off of it. But one really cool thing about the, the red eye shad is that there's a few different versions of it available. There used to actually be a silent one, which I think I have a couple of still. However, one of the most viable ones, let's see if I can find it in here, yeah. So they have what's called the tungsten two tap and I got one version right here. Basically, it has a single knocker in there, which is actually gonna be a topic that we're gonna talk about a lot in this box. I like different vibrations, whether it's silent with nothing in it, like the Thunderhawk and the Nishini that we talked about, or this two tap where it has that sort of that more bass kind of knock to it. It transmits to the lateral line of the bass and having different types of sound, even though the bait shape is pretty much the same, really draws more strikes, especially if you're on that kind of bite. You know, you get up on a flat, there's some scattered grass or scattered cover, you're reeling that lipless and you get bit on, on your traditional kind of BB style rattle. Well, if you catch five fish doing that and they stop biting, you grab the two tap, you grab a one knocker and you give them that different vibration and you'd be amazed how many more fish as well as usually you catch a bigger fish because you know the fish are there, they're using that area, setting up on it in a pre-spawn manner and moving on in and there's probably more than the few that you actually caught. The other one that you need to have, this is actually an original dude. This is an Excalibur. They don't make them anymore, but it's a one knocker. I have a few of the originals and then I have some of the new ones which are made by Booyah. Once again, has that single, you can actually see it in there because this is like a ghost shad pattern. It has that single one knock style to it. I love this color. If you have clear water, this is an old school kind of ghost shad style color, semi-transparent, actually used to be clear and now it's kind of yellow because it's been in my box so long. Caught a ton of fish, actually even in Florida on that guy. But I also have, you know, your one knocker in, in a red, and that's the Booyah, it's a half ounce version. Now I also have these guys, they come in three quarter ounce sizes. So I do have some of those. Basically, here's a one knock. So the three quarter is bigger as well as weighing more. It also has a slightly different vibration. It has a little more of a, a wide, not a wide gate to it, but a little wider gate, a little more of a thud, thud, thud versus a dud, 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 dud. And what I'll do is I'll use this if I'm trying to get a little bit deeper or if I'm trying to stay on the bottom. The three quarter ounce works great in, depending if there's grass or not, but six to eight feet of water. If you're trying to bump the, bump the bottom, a slow roll of a three quarter in about eight feet of water will put you pretty darn close to the bottom, ticking that bottom. But if you have grass that comes up off the bottom and you have like a gap between the surface of the water and the grass that's about four feet, five feet, just a little bit deeper where with a half ounce, you don't feel like you're always staying down sort of near that grass and making contact. That's when I'll get out that three quarter, especially if I'm trying to fish a little bit deeper. One of the best bites I've ever had with a lipless was down on a lake called Lake Russo. And there's a bunch of trees, a bunch of stumps sticking out, these giant fields of stumps near the river channel. And that varies anywhere from like 12, 15, eight, 10 foot. So it's deeper stuff. And I would actually use a three quarter because what I wanted to do is I wanted to run into those trees deep, like five, six, eight foot. And I wanted this thing to bounce off those jokers in, in that sort of water column. And that's where those fish were set up. They were suspended around those, those stumps and those, those trees, but they were deeper. And that half ounce wouldn't get down to them. And especially at the pace I was reeling it and ripping it, the half ounce wouldn't stay down, but that three quarter would. So that's really when I go to that three quarter. And the red eye also comes in a three quarter. And I'll use that same kind of philosophy with the bait, just targeting different water columns when I do switch various, switch to various weights. So let me show you this one before I wrap up. For all you guys in Florida, one of the best colors that I've found, especially if you're down there on the Harris chain, is this guy. I don't even know what it's called. It's a one knocker from Booya. It's kind of a green shad pattern. It looks a lot like the shad as well as the brim that you find in the grass down there. I've caught one of my biggest bags out on the Harris chain on Lake Griffin throwing this guy right here. Once again, one knocker though, something a little bit different. That's not to say that BB baits when it comes to lipless don't work because I actually am gonna show you a couple, but really keeping in mind and keying in on that vibration and understanding that, hey, if I throw that BB and I don't get bit, I should probably have a one knocker tied on just to play back and forth. Maybe they're biting the BB style one day, maybe they're biting the one knocker, maybe they're biting the silent one. You gotta play with those different vibrations because they do make a difference. 
So before we get into a couple other half ounce, let me show you kind of a sneaky three quarter that I have. This is actually a, a duo bait. Um, so what's cool about this guy is it is your traditional BB style bait, but what's nice is it has the rounded, less kind of flat areas, much like the Thunderhawk had, which creates a very subtle, what I deem more of a cold water presentation, 40s, low 50s. It's a very, very tight, but sort of soft wobble to it when you reel it through the water. What's also really cool is this is what I would call traditionally a half ounce size. So it very much compares to your red eye shad size wise. But what's cool with this guy is it's actually three quarters of an ounce. So it's a heavier bait, but in a more compact size. So if you're trying to target some fish that are a little bit deeper, but they're finicky with that three quarter ounce size, because this is a pretty hefty bait, that's when I'll go to this guy. And also what you can do with it is you can kind of ride that bottom. This thing will actually stand on the bottom pretty well when you're reeling it. So you can kind of drag it or slow worm it along the bottom. Just a little different presentation, same bait, but different water column and sort of different presentation with it that you're allowed to do just because of the way the bait is weighted and set up. I don't even know what the hell this one is called, but I'm all about different body shapes to create different vibration. I'm gonna call this guy the robot. So this is one of the newer ones. It looks super funky. It's got those vents on it, as well as some indentations. So this one really has a unique wobble to it and in kind of a different kind of thud. Once again, vibration, vibration, vibration. But it's a half ounce version, got it in the shad pattern. Just something to kind of mix it up if I get on a good trap bite. I wanna be able to kind of rotate through lures because I know if I find two or three bites, two or three bass on a flat, I know there's more. It's just a question of me figuring out the presentation to get them to bite. What's another one that I got in here? Ah, this is a sneaky one. This guy right here. So this is a Florida special. Some guys throw it up in Alabama and up north, but it really has been a Florida performer for me. This is an Aruka Shad made by Spro. Um, it has a little bit different nose to it, a slightly different body shape. I believe this is the five ace version, a little bit heavier. Awesome go shad pattern. If you got super clear water, this guy is excellent when you're ripping off the grass. I also have it in like a red version right here. You can hear all the rattles. Red version right here. What's kind of cool with this guy is even though it does have that flatter nose to it, it has a very soft vibration. So you have the BBs, but the vibration is a little more comparable to what I would say like that Duo or that Thunderhawk is. It's a very subtle vibration. I throw it on that 12 pound test setup with the 7.3 XD3. I like a little softer rod with it because feeling this thing vibrate when it's not fouled, fouled in the grass is hugely important. And this has definitely a different vibration. Once again, keying into, they, they feel that different vibration. It's a different style of presentation. I'll have this guy, as I stick it in my hand, in a 5 as well as the slightly lighter one. Um, that's what's kind of cool too, is you can target a little bit shallower stuff. I think the, the lighter one is like three eighths. So some of that like one to three foot, maybe four foot where you're slow rolling that trap or that lipless is perfect for this. And that subtle vibration, it fits right into it. Fish are a little deeper. They want something that's a little more subtle. Let me see if I actually have one right down here. Yeah, there she is. So they have this slightly smaller size. This is your traditional chartreuse shad right there but very cool bait, kind of a little different depth running, a little different depth column, but gets a ton of bites because the vibration is different and you're able to target those different water columns. What I also have in here is this guy right here. Um, Ryan Salzman last year showed me a hardcore jerk bait that I absolutely love. And hardcore is kind of a branch of Yozuri. And these guys, these are the Yozuri Rattlin vibes, gold, dude. Even outside of Florida, that's, that's another thing we really haven't focused a lot on, but red obviously for spring, but gold is kind of one of those cool colors. I haven't always been a huge fan of it. However, gold in Florida absolutely kills it. And what I'm starting to learn is on Gunnersville and some of these TDA lakes, it's absolute fire as well. So this is a Rattlin vibe. You can see it has a little different body shape. It still has your flatter head, but it has a little different kind of I guess layout where the back is a little more rounded than what you'd find on um, a red eye shad, has a little more subtle vibration and it, they make it in one of my favorite colors that I have like across all traps. I am a huge sucker for like a ghost shad with a green back. So it has a slight purple look to it, a little bit of fun, like green, almost like a ham and tearing look to it. And then a touch of orange and red right on the, the chin or kind of the neck of the bait great clear water trap.
like absolutely stellar. You know, it's about creating a silhouette. You know, oftentimes in that clear water, you're fishing it pretty quick. These fish don't really see it and you don't really want them to, but you want to have some colors that match up with the forage that's available. And this is one of the most natural traps that I've found out there with that ghost style kind of look to it, but it still has some of that green and then a little bit of red to catch their attention. Now, a couple weird ones that I have, and these are ones that you don't see all the time. One of them is this guy right here. This is actually a mega bass bait. Um, this is a very different bait to fish in the sense of the way that it feels. And of course, it's all tangled with just about everything. You know, if you're throwing a red-eye shad and you go to this guy, you're gonna be like, man, that feels really off but it has a place and part of the place is you can see it has almost like a sucker or a carp looking kind of mouth right there super flat this bait stands up very well on the bottom so if you're fishing like a hard bottom area some shell some rock even some sand or something along those lines and you're looking to kind of worm this bait along the bottom this is the one you want to look at it's very weight forward um, meaning that a lot of the weight is set up in the head causing this bait to really be almost like a, a lift crankbait where it's digging along the bottom. If you slow roll this thing, it has a very rounded back. You're not gonna get much return vibration to the rod, but it is vibrating. And it's a great way to target some of those hard bottom areas where you wanna take that lipless and you want it to dig very subtly along the bottom. It is an expensive lure, but there are times when they will bite this thing and will bite nothing else. It's, it's a subtle presentation, very different from a lot of the lipless that I've showed you thus far. The other weird one that I have, and we'll wrap up on this guy is the small ones so not always in spring do they play a role but definitely as we get into sort of fall and later season when a lot of that bait is kind of tiny but you get some clear water and these fish get really hard to catch even though they're schooling they're eating a lot of these smaller baits so i'll have kind of an array of quarter ounce lipless like this guy this is i believe the berkeley is it like warthog or war pig or something like that red eye shad and a quarter ounce green gizzard shad tough to beat that guy but these guys are all like one quarter ounce even got the little the the red version so i'll use these in two situations one if i am dirt shallow in the spring super shallow because it's a quarter ounce i can fish it in very very skinny water and i don't have to worry about it laying on the bottom all the time i can kind of keep it off the bottom but still fish it pretty slow and then like i said in fall or late summer when you get these schooling fish they're very hard to catch because the bait is very small the water is pretty clear you need something that's subtle small also that stays up in the water column even though these fish might be in eight to ten feet of water they're focusing on bait that's almost on the surface maybe you can't catch them on a top water i'll blaze this trap right over the top of them and it, especially this guy, this green gizzard chad in the quarter ounce is a mean mama john at that time of year. So they'll be schooling on that bait. You can catch them on an A-rig, but a trap's a great way and a fun way to catch them. You can put it in a lot of different places, but that quarter ounce is hard to beat. So I hope you guys enjoyed this going in depth into my lipless crankbait box. I will definitely be having them tied on for the next probably three to six weeks as we go into this kind of pre-spawn staging and spawn mode. And depending on when it happens by you, you're gonna need one tied on too. I'll put links to all this stuff down in the description box at Tackle Warehouse. If you guys got any questions, throw them down there. Or if you got any tips or recommendations for me to grab some other lip list, cause I definitely need some more to fill up my box, right? Drop them down in the comments box. We'll see you next time either back in the garage or from the boat talking fishing. Tight lines, boys.